Uh oh, uh oh, my God, we'll bring him in. We can't keep him waiting. Let's get it going. My TJ, man, I appreciate you coming on, brother. How you doing? What's going on, fellas? How's it going? Man, Hold on, let me my, my thing. All right, there we go. There oh we yeah, go. you good? Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, morning my brother. brother. Appreciate you for getting up, brother. I hope I didn't wake you up this morning. <laughs> nah, I'm, I'm up. I'm up. I'd be up six thirty-seven, man. I got three-year-old. He be up cracking dawn, man. Come wake me up, so. <laughs> I gotta have that energy bright and early, so I'm glad. Hey, go, hey NorCal in the house. You in NorCal, right? Yes, sir. Bay Area. Hey, I already <laughs> know. I already know the lingo. Bay you know. Area. Hey, I, I'm from Compton. I know you know a, a Compton cat, and you know a Bay Area cat when you meet them, dog. It's, it's, it's the lingo we got. You know. I what just man? got off the phone with somebody. I was like, man, I will tell you from the Bay. I said, man, I'm an older Bay. So, shoot, yeah. you still notice that? You know something. <laughs> oh yeah, De La Salle in the house, uh, legend. I, you know, shit. We used, to, uh, I used to recruit him for years. You know, my boy Larry Allen. I grew up with in Compton's uh, son okay. was there. He was coaching up there for a yep. minute. Uh, yeah, I ran into Larry a few times up there. My dad coached up there still. He still coached track, but he coached football for a long time. Okay. Now my little brother, he on the head, he on the football staff. So, yeah, Larry, oh, man, be up there looking like a house. Oh yeah, that motherfucker, <laughs> shit. Hey, he come. Hey, dog, he'd roll up to uh, Cowboys practice in a white a pro club and some and some croaker sacks. Shit. <laughs> I'm to tell you. I love hey, it. man, you're a real thumper in this game. Is it, What are you thinking about football right now, man, and the way you look at it? I just want to – just give me, like, your, your I guess, a, uh, a sentence answer. Like, what when I ask you what the NFL is right now, what what's your best answer? The NFL is – Ooh, that's a good one. I know what everybody want to say and what they're thinking, right? Everyone wants to say the S word, right? The S word, the NFL is soft. The NFL is soft. I say the NFL is a lot softer. Uh, but in certain instances, it's a lot safer. And that's not what you want or what you uh, immediately, you know, getting from football as a fan is not – you're not watching it because it's safe, right? That's Right. That's exactly – that's the opposite of why you watch the game. So – I mean, it is safer and softer, so you can just put both of those. <laughs> no, I feel, I feel you, man. And, and, and you obviously was a player that, I mean, you know, was a part of one of the greatest defenses of, of, of all time, a physical guy, hard-hitting. Uh, do you feel like your game would translate to the game today? Uh, not, but not the game that I used at that time, but my game for sure. Like, I mean, I was that way because that's how the game was at the time. Right. But in college, I played corner. I came in as a corner. So I was covering and doing all that and kind of known as a physical corner until they moved me to safety. It's like, I you a little too physical. And I had some, <laughs> and I had a, a knee injury with my niscus. I just couldn't turn and change direction and do all that consistently without it blowing up like a balloon on me. So, hmm. um, but yeah, for sure, I could definitely, I think I, oh man, might be a better player in this game because, hmm. you know, all I have to do is worry about getting the ball. It's not like they put an emphasis on tackling, so you don't have to be versatile as long as you get around the ball, care. You could make a play on the ball, and you'll play a long time in the league right now. Let me ask you this. I, we were debating this yesterday. With, um, and, you know, we got Trent Richardson on Thursdays and Eric Weddle um, on mo every Monday. And E-Dub was like, you know, we were talking, and I'm like, could the Ronnie Lots and those type of guys from that era play today? Because, you know, nowadays you got to run so much match zero quarters coverage and, and, and everybody coming out and empty and 10 personnel and removing the back. Like those guys were downhill run defenders, hash mm -hmm. defenders. Nowadays you got to be a guy to be able to take two vertical, take the tight end vertical, take the back vertical on a wheel route out, the, you know, from like the, the nickel spot. Could those guys have, have played in this, in this era – and then would they have played? Because, I mean, they're going to hit you and get fined or get kicked yeah. out. I mean, it's just a different game, right? They would have played. They just would have been full-time linebackers. Yeah. yeah. There would have been no safety. They really, huh? They would have been playing full-time linebackers. I mean, you look around the league, the backers are 222, 30, max. Like, that was the safeties, you know, growing yeah. up. Like, yeah. Atwater, 230, you know, all those type of guys, the Lynches and Ronnie Lodge and – you know, that era, 90s to early 2000s, was 230 up. If you wasn't there, I remember coming out the combine, I was 208, and I was gaining weight to play. Like, oh, you're playing strong? You better put on about 10 pounds. 
So right. I ended up getting up to like 215, 212 coming off of the combine. It slowed me down, but I was big enough, and they was like, okay, well, we know he can play this position, you know, and, and hold sturdy because of his size. But, you know, everyone wasn't really worried about, you no. Know, get out there and hit something. That's your job. Right, right. Especially man. in the AFC North. You know, we was in the heyday of the Ravens and the Steelers and the Bengals even. Like, that yep. division was crucial. Every <laughs> <laughs> that division was crucial, man. A hundred percent, man. And I want to fast forward to today and talk about your Denver Broncos right now. How do they look to you? I know it's only been you know week one. They obviously lost against the Raiders. You know, there's been so much talk with Sean Payton being there, and if he, him and Russell Wilson will will connect. A lot of young talent on that squad. I thought last year you guys had one of the better defenses in the entire league, but no offense, and that's why you know you, you kind of had the season that they had. This year, there's a lot of high hopes. What do you see for the Broncos, I guess, the rest of this season? When I tell you my hopes are not high. <laughs> they definitely not high. Uh, man, honestly, if they could get out this thing 8-8, eight and eight, mm. it'd be a blessing. Because, I mean, like you said, the defense is playing well. But you can't use those excuses. The Raiders got a brand-new quarterback. You know, they coming in with a, new guys on defense. They ran the ball all day last year so it's not like they you know coming out doing something different they got garoppolo he's not aaron Rodgers, but he wins right he does win so hey i gotta ask you something about college man because you had two of my longtime homeboys on that staff just tell everybody is is, is dp a pimp <laughs> i think he froze up oh he froze up he probably got i a did call. i did Oh, there you go. I'm hearing it. There you go. He's back. He's back. I got two lifelong homeboys on your Oregon staff when you played, man. And uh, just tell everybody out there, is DP a pimp? Uh, DP, DP, DP's a player. He's not a pimp. <laughs> DP's a player. Hey, he, a, he a yay area player. Man, like, DP he, he, is. He's from Banning out here in SoCal, but that motherfucker act like he a, a Bay Area pimp. <laughs> hey. Him and uh, Coach Cam used to be in them suits all the time, oh. man. They come up to the the weekly away road games and be clean as a whistle, man. Hey, dog. Hey, this motherfucker shows up to Kansas to recruit one of my kids, Jermaine Johnson, who's the DM for the Jets right now, and he he rolls up. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah like, I seen. Oh, he had a good game. Yeah. yeah, he balled. He balled. It's like one twenty in Kansas, humidity. You know the humidity out there. This motherfucker pulls up in a lime green gator suit. I'm like, this motherfucker, you wild as hell, dog. DP's OG as hell, man. Great dude, hey, though. Great dude. Yeah, great dude. Great dude. And the thing about that staff at Oregon, man, we, like, you can tell, ask all the players, man, that came through Oregon, we still so cool with those coaches. We see those coaches at any time, and the relationship is still there. I, it was truly like a family up at Oregon. The coaches have been there forever. You know that, like. That Bilotti era into the yep. even rolling into the chip, yep. chip hit all the guys, and even chip brought guys to UCLA when he left. So, you know, it, it's very tight knit coming from a university that a major university to be like that. And as the years gone by, I'm actually surprised that the relationships are holding that tight. No doubt, no doubt. The running back coach, a hell of a dude. Uh, had the had the son that that mm -hmm. I think passed away recently. Uh, Great dude. Yeah, Flugrad. Yeah. Robert Flugrad was on that staff with you guys. Yeah. I think yeah, was, on. was on that staff. Yeah. Bilotti, um, Bilotti and my uncle coached together at Chico State years ago, so I know Mike forever. I was the head coach at Compton. I brought my whole staff up there when you were playing. Uh, um, so just to, to clinic and shit. That's right yeah. when he was bringing in uh, Chip around 08, yep. 09. Yep, yep, exactly. Yep. Exactly. That was a uh, small world. My junior, senior year. Yep, exactly. Hell yeah. See, now, let me ask you this, man, straight up. And I thought you told me this a while back before. Your not your no fly zone defense with the Broncos. Is that a top five defense of all time? Like, where do y'all rank? Be real with me. I think, you know, in my opinion, I'm gonna say we, we, I'm gonna say we number one, man. I, I'm gonna say we number one. I like in the in the transition, the deep transitional defense era where it was going away from the big box and going to where guys had to cover, but you still some physicality before, you know, the flags start coming over just for guys being hit and hurt. Like, you guy hurt, you know a flag coming out. Like, guy, right. just because he right. hurt, the flag come out, that's how the game is right now. But I don't think there's a defense that could have did what we did, period. But now, overall, people going to have their opinions. Universally, we top three. Ooh. 
We talk hey, Eric Weddle's in the chat, TJ. He said, uh, my dog is on this my morning. Dog, e. Oh. <laughs> uh, my guy. Hey, that's hey, that's my guy. E man, he one of the older guys that honestly shot, showed the ropes, you know, as a as a veteran safety, not even on my team, but just around the league. Like, yeah, you know, so um yeah, he, he on our show every Monday, man. We got an E dub Mondays with him and uh okay. He drops the wisdom. Yeah, man. Shout out to E-Dub. Uh, man, I, let me ask you this about this uh, Russell Wilson thing, man. Like, uh, like, is he broken and can't be fixed, or is he damaged goods? Or do you think Sean Payton can get the, something out of him where he was simulants of somewhat of Seattle Seahawks days and, and at least sh show the big arm and the accuracy on the deep ball that he once had and ad-lib a few bit, and get out the pocket and make some plays? I think the opportunity is coming. Hmm. I think last week it was kind of just let's play it slow. I mean, he only he threw for 100 and what 20 yards. Yeah, the, the rating was high, two touchdowns, you know. So, not turning the ball over that's you know, that's <laughs> that's a win, <laughs> that's a win right? right? <laughs> that's a win. So, I think it's coming. Um, I think Sean Coach Payton is just maybe going to sprinkle it in slowly, two and three. I don't know, Coach. What would you do? Man, shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I put my goddamn head between my legs. And uh, shit. We got, hey, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a proponent. Man, I've been on, uh, on, the, on, the, on the Russell Wilson deal, man. I've been saying, I said, damn, this cat can't just fall off a cliff that fast. I got, I got, yeah. We got to have like a comeback player of the year in him. With Sean Payton and that Denver team, you know they had the tools. It, last year it happened, and I feel that it's the same thing, dog. Tim Patrick went down. He may not be a big time league number one, but he sure opens up that offense to where you can go from dead read number one to cloudy read number two to check it down to him. It, it, it people don't realize that don't know football. The common fan they don't understand how big of a loss that is. Two years in a row, I, man, it hurts them, man. And I don't know. Now you lost Dolchers to tight end. I don't know. The shit just keeps getting worse for him, it seems like, in Denver. So man. maybe there's no future in his front. <laughs> I don't know. Yes, man, I don't, I, you write about Tim, though, especially having that sure-handed guy. Yeah. Big body, going to catch in traffic, get you the tough third downs. Man, that's a quarterback safety. You know, that's a safety net. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, the big plays are great. You know, open up the field for Judy and Cortland. Uh, but I think the three of them – at the same time, work very well together. You're right. No That's doubt. Real, Hopefully, they get Jerry Judy back too. Yeah. Yeah, man. Oh. Uh, Mims gonna have to step up, and I think they got to get more of that running game. That's the biggest yeah. thing. They got to get more of the running game, man. They haven't been able to run the rock. Yeah. No, nah, that's true, man. Uh, we'll see. I mean, it's early. I feel like week one. We and JB, we've been talking about it all week it, across the league. It just wasn't like a good week one. I feel like bad football. Bad football across the league, yeah. especially from I said, on Twitter too. I said on Twitter, I'm like, man, week one was very bad. <laughs> Everybody, very bad it's football. like all the good players, the good quarterbacks played horrible. It was Josh Allen, Burrow. I, I love Lamar, Lamar didn't play well. I was like, dang, like what's like what's well, going I mean, on? You playing one preseason game to none for some of these guys. Mm. And it, it, I, I broke it down, it's dog. Just I, not I, working. I said, man. It's no way. I don't see Aaron Rodgers getting hurt the way he did if he was used to at least some live ammunition for two or three preseason games. I, I just don't – you can't go from being cold to go right into stretching. Like, it ain't – old. It ain't. we're not 1970, dog. Like, you got to get some live ammunition thrown at you just for the simple fact that it's live. Like, he ain't done nothing. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Am I, am I fucked up for saying that or am I – No, nah, you're right. Or what do you think? You're right. You're right. You're absolutely right. You got to have a, a, a couple, a series, two series, something. You, know, you don't even know how to fall right yet. That's what happened. Yeah, exactly. You fell all awkward and that and, and Tom Brady still on the ground. Right? Yep. Huh? Brady used to play him. Yep. Brady, no. That's why he got seven rings. <laughs> Brady will play a whole half a lot in preseason, a lot of times. So now that's real. Another topic I want, I'm glad you're on here, TJ. We're, we, we've been talking about this all week. And me and JB kind of got some mixed feelings about it, but uh, a representative from the NFLPA came out this morning, actually, and basically stated that the uh, all NFL stadiums should uh, have natural grass. You, you see a lot of players coming out saying that turf is the cause of a lot of these injuries. I want to ask you, though, man, because I've heard mixed opinions from different players in different eras. 
you're from someone who's a little bit from like kind of a tweener from the new era and, and the old school era. What's your take on like turf versus grass? And do you believe the turf is causing some of these injuries? Absolutely. I'm a, I'm a proponent for grass, field, grass, everything. I grew up when you came outside in the fall and that's how you knew it was football season because you smelled that grass. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, oh, yeah, it's football. The turf, man, I've had my injuries on the turf in high school. Just too hard or it gets caught or it's just – I do not like it. I don't like it at all. I don't like playing at turf stadiums. I was blessed to play for two – actually, three organizations that had grass fields. Um, you know, Denver's grass, Cleveland's grass. Even went to Tampa, that was grass. So that was a blessing. I didn't have to play on no turf. But that turf beats your body up, falling on it. Don't just think about, like, the knees, the ankles and all that. It's shoulders, concussions. It's all it's the whole everything. Like you falling on it, your cleats getting caught. It's just it's bad. That's what I was gonna ask you. We have a doctor on every Tuesday, and he was like, it's more of the of the rubber and the cement mix that doesn't give on the cleat. It you know, it grabs the cleat. Mm-hmm. Um and we've seen major injuries in grass and turf. I mean, it is what it is, a collision sport. It's a it's a gladiator sport, it's gonna happen, but the turf, do you think it's more soft tissue damage or more head trauma is what do you think is the worst part of the turf Ooh, that's a good question i uh, i don't know i probably would have said soft tissue before the tool injury because mm. that was pretty bad yeah hell yeah um, that was that's pretty good. bad uh and i think the the t- soft tissue is more frequent but probably the head is the most serious um, right, 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 right. Issue. we're seeing we had 270 injuries day one tj like the most ever of of growing hammy achilles uh i mean i've never seen anything like this and i've been on this hill man screaming down at everybody i'm the old head on the on the hill everybody talk about y'all at the clouds and shit like there's got to be some type of there may not be we may not be able to finger point it directly but there's got to be something to it in the la- last year, there was 900 injuries. We already had 270 game one, uh, week one. Um, do you think it's a lack of preparation because of the bags of money they're getting? Are they invested like a TJ Ward used to be, Eric Weddle used to be? Uh, are they are they chilling in Bali uh, <laughs> two weeks before the season, or are they out there grinding like you used to because you wanted that you wanted the big bag? You know what I'm saying? I think yeah. they're getting a little early now. Yeah, I mean that that definitely may be. Um, the issue, I think that it's a, just a hip hop era of football than it's ever been before, and where the the separation is getting further, like closer together. I guess it's like half these dudes really think they rappers, and it's they want to be on Instagram and be models and doing all this other stuff. But man, um, definitely the preparation can't be there if it's this many injuries, whether it's individually or organizationally wise like are you preparing these athletes the the way they need to be to go into a 17 week season or are you just like okay let's just get them in young and turn them over and get some more young ones in here mm. you know how that go um look at the running back market they don't care about the running yeah. backs they're not paying them i remember we were saying yeah older players okay you turn 30 you know it's <laughs> you, you see that switch around the league like oh i'm 30 now but now it's like these cats turning I'm hearing it 27, 28 is like damaged goods, especially for a back, like you said. So yeah. I think individually as a player, you just got to be, you know, very aware and self-driven to do stuff individually, right? You got to do it on your own if you want to get there. Self-motivation is a bit, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It is. No, it is. That's real. No that's real, man. And we, we always come on here and like debate the old versus the young. You know, I'm, I'm usually the guy defending the – the young folks and I, I'm always a, a proponent of telling players to get get their bag, get their money because we know NFL stands for not for long. So I'm all for getting your bag, but at the same time, no, you can't get the money and then forget about the work. You know what I'm saying? I think there's too many players right now that um, they don't truly love the game; they just love what it does for them. Versus, weird. I feel like back in the days, it was a little bit more of guys who, of course, they want the money, but they actually love football. Like at the end of the day. When, when you look back and we were all kids growing up, like you want to play in the NFL because that was your dream. Not just because of the money, because like, I actually love this. This is 
this is fun to me. Where now I think you know you you have these freak athletes who are just gifted, but they're not fully maximizing their skill set because of like I don't know if, if it's the 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 curse of the gifted. You want to say that? I don't know what it is, but it's just one of those things where um, I do think money does play a little bit of a role in terms of just the, the work uh, that players are, are putting in, into their bodies during the off season for sure. But there's a lot of distractions as well. So, I mean, I wouldn't say it's more or less than we had, but it was just different. But in a different way, our distractions were all outside. Mm. <laughs> like, so whether you was doing something and you had to go outside to do it. Now they got a lot of direct distractions. They don't got to move an inch. You know, they get on the game and get on their phone. Order food to the house. Or exactly. You ain't got to walk outside to go get nothing to eat. So it's right. different types of distractions. And not only just players, I think it's just made society lazy as old. You know, you're talking about the NFL, but if you look around, it ain't just the athletes. Hell no. Society, dog. Mm -hmm. Most yeah. of these we've ever been as a nation. Lazy. Just lazy. lazy yeah. Everybody wants a handout the, for doing that. The mentality that. is it's not let me earn it. It's I deserve it. Mm. I deserve it. <clears throat> like, mm. how do you and they ain't even done shit. They ain't busted a great fight. Like. Yeah. Ain't done nothing. And nah. another thing, I'm gonna go on one more. This is the last. Go ahead and go, TJ. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Gonna, it's too friendly, man. Mm. Too friendly. That's real. Thank you, it's homie. Too friendly. If I go back to the question you asked me earlier, what is football? It's friendly. Mm. The jersey it's swap there, I call it. Yeah, Lee. Like I'm. Dude, trying to get your jersey, the game ain't even started. Like, <laughs> what? Come on, man. Man, I'm so glad you calling Smitty out right now. <laughs> ah, damn, homie. I've been <laughs> saying this like it's the jersey swap era, bro. The dirt, like it used. Even I, when I was 2010, he was few players far in between that swap jerseys. Like, right. either like the quarterbacks or yeah. two cold DBs or the running back in the DB, like. But as the years gone by, you know, everyone started swapping, which is cool. But and TJ, um, I was talking to Weddle. Huh? It, it used to happen in the locker, though, right? Like it was kind of private. I want yeah, to see sports shit privately. I don't want nobody to see it. Yeah, have your trainer send your jersey over, and I'm gonna have him send you just like that. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Like we're making I, it. A, it's an IG story spectacle now. That's what yeah. it is. It's for it's for social media clicks and likes, and it's like. Oh, the homie got Tom Brady's jersey. Like, you know, Rudolph, the the, the tight end, told a story yesterday. I guess that 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 Brady had to sign young players' shit every day. They left it at mm -hmm. his locker. Yeah, I see. And I'm that. like, damn, dog. Let this man. Let's finish the season and try to win a damn Super Bowl on his way out. We're worried about getting shit signed because you know you're on your way out. Hmm. Yeah, well, you mean Brady old as hell, so them kids grew up watching him. So. Yeah, that's <laughs> a little different. Brady that's a little different. Been a yeah. with Joe Montana. I'm gonna get that autograph. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> hey, well, I need this for the fam. I grew up a Niner fan my whole life. Don't put me in the locker room with Joe Montana. Yeah. Wow, but uh, but you gotta be more so like 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 peer to peer, like yeah, peer to peer. Right peer. Now. Yeah. yeah, peer to peer is just a little much. And I, yeah. I do agree with that, but being devil's advocate though. Okay, we jersey swap, we took the pictures or whatever. Woo, woo, woo. We still got to go out there and, and play football though. So like, I get it. Like optically, it looks like soft, but you turn the tape on, we still out here hitting though. You know what I mean? It's, it's still out here. And maybe I'm looking at it from from a defensive line perspective because like, to, and Big Matt was just on here, Matt McChesney, um, from a Bronco, from a Jack. Up front, it's still physical. Like I can't yeah. the, maybe the secondary different, but when it comes to O line, D line, they still out here. Hitting each other in the mouth, playing for because you got to. You ain't got no you choice. To, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, hey TJ, um, before you get out of here, I gotta ask you, man. Like, do you think? I know you said friendly, which is perfect wording. Um, I like the the investment. Not only does it correlate with the injuries we're seeing, it, it also correlates with a kid not knowing who TJ Ward is that's coming up in high school that plays safety or Eric Weddle mm -hmm. or a running back that don't know who the fuck Barry Sanders is. I was recruiting kids that had no idea who Eric Dickerson and Bo Jackson were. I know for a fact there was players on the Jackson State team that did not know who Deion Sanders was before he took the job. Like, to me, they're worried about video games, social media, and cell phones over playing the game that they say, quote, unquote, they love. Y'all don't love football if you don't even know your own position and the greats that played it before you. 
So, like, I find that to be a major issue because if you don't invest in the sport you're about to play that's going to pay you big bags of money, it will eventually bite you. They say don't bite the hand that feeds you. It's going to do it when you when you take this game for granted. And I think that happened to Aaron Rodgers, unfortunately, by not playing the game. Play the games. That's like, that's just my take. Play the game. You ain't got to play the whole game, but at least put, play the game because karma does happen, and I think the hand – that feeds you was bitten. Um, and I think it's happening with the Burroughs, the Josh Allens. I'm just seeing it, man. We don't want to play and we go out there and play. And in the 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 league that we love growing up that's paying us generational wealth, and we're biting it right back in the hand. And I think it's costing us some of us in this in that respect. Yeah. You're right. This is, you gotta respect the game, man. You got to. That's that's true. And yeah, it's tough. It's tough. As you, I didn't even really put that all them quarterbacks is hurt at the same time. Uh, that, <laughs> you can't hit them, so when they do get hit, they so fragile. Like, oh, I'm hit, I'm hurt. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. It, it, it's so backwards. It's like the league is trying to protect them by not hitting them, but by yeah. not hitting them, you're actually putting them in harm's way because they eventually they got to get hit. JB yeah. talks about boxing, it's like a boxer if you ain't never been hitting your mouth. When you finally get hit, it's on you go, it's gonna affect you a little differently because you don't you don't know how to you know what I mean how to take that. So that's, that's crazy. Real. All these rules, and there's more injured players than ever before. That's why yeah, I be saying every day though. I'm like, you got your mind if you think TJ Ward running 20 miles an hour down the field with 10 pounds of gear on is supposed to stop now and go to 10 miles an hour to find the target zone of a quarterback to hit him so he don't get fined, it's biomechanically impossibility. It's not possible. That's why you pull a hammy and a groin and an Achilles because you just went from full go to stop. And it and it started to me, TJ, when we took out and changed the kickoff and kickoff return rules because you see half guys going full go, you have half guys stopping, and then you got the returner that's half assing, and then you got quarterbacks now stepping out of bounds half go like 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 it's a scrimmage, like they jogging out of bounds. I'm like, I, I wish I wish Justin Fields would have got lit up the now other day. They, now they're trying to get tough and turn it back up. You got Baker Mayfield trying to stiff on guys talking about get your weight up. I wish you would. I, exactly. He would have been out the game the next series. All right, we got some get your weight up for you. Don't worry about it. We're going to get this weight up because you're picking on my corner. You know he little. So let me handle this for him. But hey, that type of fear ain't nowhere in it. Like, no. I used to tell Cass all the time, yo, you talking shit. I'm gonna take a fifteen thousand dollar fine and knock your ass out. Yep. Now, quarterback can throw it over here if he want to, but I'm just letting you know. Go back and tell him that. <laughs> Go tell him. I said I'm gonna take a fine. I go to their sideline. Hey, number 82, 20 racks. I I take a fine for him. <laughs> hey, that's gangster right there. When you, when you tell him straight up, hey, it's about to happen. I'm just letting you know right now. That's that's about to go down. Hey, he's <laughs> there, I'm telling you. I see Mahomes take advantage of it more than anybody. He knows the backer ain't going to light his ass up, so he'll take three extra steps to get out of bounds. Like, And he sees the linebacker lighting up already. He's already he's already started to jog it down. This motherfucker going to take three more little cheat steps. And I'm hey. like, man, that bitch made shit to me. Ask, ask, ask Drew Bledsoe if he take three <laughs> extra steps in his day. <laughs> I, I, he ain't thinking about three extra steps. He's trying to get out as soon as possible. Right, humanly oh, like three extra steps, man. You better be sprinting. <laughs> you just get it <laughs> holding the ball out of that sideline like the first down. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, TJ, hey, 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 Tom Brady's thanking that cat that blew his ass up every day in his man, life. Every day I send him a gift basket every year. Man, <laughs> y'all hilarious, man. I gotta I love it, man. TJ, man. Uh, I gotta ask you about your shirt real quick. You know, what I mean, I, I see you got your you represent. Can you tell the people real quick? Um, what's that about? T tell them about your company before you go. Yeah, Player Above Sports, it's Player Above Sports Group, my agency started a couple years ago. So you know, we just hopping in, uh, putting another foot in the game. You know, representing guys coming out of college and you know, vets and guys already in there. Whole gambit, marketing, management, um, nil. So. You know, after I retired, just, just like, hmm, what do I want to do? And, you know, I always, always want to be around the game. And um, coaching, wasn't quite sure about that or kind of wanted to be in the front office. But I think um, this route kind of was what God called me to do. It suited me best. So 
you know, helping these players from the outside in is what we do. Hell yeah, love it. That's fire, man. Fire. Hey, man, I can't, I can't thank you enough, dog. I love old school cats, man, uh, especially my NorCal cats, the A area. I'm an E40 fanatic. That's my guy. Uh, so, you know, I've always grew up on that, even though I'm a, from the NWA era. E40 is yeah. my guy, man. I love his ass. I love the Bay Area sound, 808. That 808 sound, people don't know mm -hmm. about that shit. That's old school Cali shit yeah. right there. For sure, Coach. Yeah, now nah, a lot of respect for you, man. We're one of them coaches that give it to players how, you know, they need to hear it. And that's not always respected or appreciated, especially in this, you know, era. But uh, much nah, love, man. You know, you. real recognized, real. You know, I never seen a player talk shit about me. That's the crazy part. It's always the fan that never <laughs> played. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Ex exactly, right? Yeah. So. Hell yeah. Much love, dog. Hey, stay safe out here in these streets, man. It's wild, and I appreciate you coming on. Yes, sir. Appreciate you, my guy. Too. Yes, sir. Much right. love. Appreciate it. Hey. Uh, TJ War, man. Clap it up for my main man. Uh, we're getting them all on here, man. And uh, we love the real ones. Because the regular cats we don't have on this show. We don't want no cookie cutting like bullshit. We want the real yeah. shit. That's why we're the realest show on planet Earth. 